Thank you for having me. It's a true pleasure to be here today with you and uh, share the panel with such distinguished guests, which I'm honored to have colleagues. Um, prior to getting to your uh, question, probably just a small background on the Albanian payments landscape. Uh, we do our uh, similar neighbors in, in terms of payments and developments uh, in comparison with the European markets. And we try to do a lot in terms of, as a central banker, which on the point of view of the audience might be some sort of boring uh, hat to wear, but you try as much as you can to be a catalytic role. If we go back in history, as history was a topic, a very a good one in the first day of the conference, major market movements were made from the market players, meaning fintech, uh, innovation, and then the regulator had to catch up. Now it's the role of the regulators to try and build some building blocks so that innovation can, can bring some value to the economy and to the growth. In Albania, we had um, 2017 um, a strategy, a midterm strategy in terms of payments, where instant payment was one of them, but not the only one, uh, mainly um, framework, legal framework, uh, procedural, uh, new infrastructures to make sure that electronic payments are uptaken and the economy can go digital. Uh, why is that? Because studies prove that not just for Albania, but for the whole countries, that cash economy and shadow economy cost very much to the economy. In our case, it's around 1.6% of the GDP. It's the cost of managing cash, meaning that at least 30% of shift from cash to digital, not just instant, but digital, payments uh, from cards, from credit transfer, they can bring a huge benefit to the, to the economy. With that in mind, you can bring up the instant payment much more into the market and make citizens be included. Instant payments can be a very successful tool, but if you have a large population which is uh, excluded financially, meaning they don't own a bank account or they don't perform, that they don't use a unique account for electronic payments, then your role of spreading it, it gets very limited. So it has to go in line, and I think uh, Montenegro, Albania, and some other countries in the region have done a great job in trying to make the financially excluded included. In Albania, we had 40% of adult population uh, which uh, owned at least one bank account, and they were performing only four cashless payments per, per capita in a year, which is very few, meaning mm -hmm. they could only pay water four times per year in average. Now in 2023, we have around 78% of the adult population having at least one bank account. But this is not all. I mean, you need that this account to be used electronically so that businesses and individuals can use it and economic growth can be driven from that. And also 21st cashless payments per capita from Albanian citizens, at least in the last year. So we achieved this. Now, instant payments, where do we stand? And why is it important? It's important because it's velocity of money. As fast as money circulates, besides the trucks and the import-export, which might have its own timing, the background of every financial movement, the payment side is as important as the transfer of goods. In the European Union and the Western Balkans, they are working so much to make such transition smooth. But if it's not complemented with the payment side, then uh, connections, business ones, cannot happen so rapidly. And why is velocity important? Because those who are merchants can have immediately the funds in their account so they can buy inventory and go on like that faster. In Albania, we are trying uh, piloting together with the neighboring countries uh, to use an infrastructure which is for the moment offered by the Central Bank of Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, for a small background, Bank of Italy is the owner and the, let's say, inventor of the instant payment infrastructure for the whole ECB or European countries. So they are trying to replicate it, make a small clone for the Western Balkan countries for those that are, of course, interested a bit competitor with you. <laughs> and in this case, that would be uh, some sort of win-win for our small countries. Mm. We understand from years that we are very small in comparison to the European markets, but we are very much connected. 
import and export is more than half. 57% of our import export is done with European countries. So there is a huge potential and relation, but not only going individually, rather they're all together. It's important to convey the message that as long as we work together in our small countries, within our countries, but also within the region, there's a huge potential that our power is greater and our voice can be heard. This clone can be an important milestone for our countries to implement domestic instant payment, to make our citizens included, to make sure that transfers happen instantly, within two seconds or a bit more. Let's, let's leave them some room. And make sure that such merchants, clients, and businesses, which are doing a lot of work in the region and beyond, can benefit for all this digital uh, uh, environment.